So I'll start with the most fun question. What's the halal way of approaching a girl you like? <laughs> Even though that's question number 12. <laughs> I thought, you know. So uh, this is more complicated. We've made it more complicated than uh, the Sahaba. So the Sahaba were simple people. And they came from a very rebellious society where men and women did all kinds of things and nobody cared. And then Islam came. And I want to give you some background here. You know, in, in Medina, when the Sahaba migrated, the Muhajirun were bankrupt nearly, right? They left everything behind. And Medina was a crazy place. Right now it's Medina Munawwara. But Medina back then was Las Vegas. It was bad. When the Prophet went there, for them, it was not a good place. Okay, you have to understand, it was a crazy, crazy society. For instance, one of the most common industries in the city of Medina was prostitution. When the Prophet moved there, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And the women that were, they were brothels, like prostitution houses, they used to have flags outside their house. That this is a place you can come for those kinds of things. And a companion comes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and says, Ya Rasulullah, uh, there's a woman, because he doesn't make any money, he's a muhajir. This is a woman, she makes good money, I'd like to marry her. And what, what does she do? Oh well, you know, she's in the... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm not going to spell it out. And those, you know why I'm telling you this? Because Sahaba didn't even know that's a bad thing yet. They were also learning, weren't they? They didn't become angels overnight. They were being developed. And so he doesn't even think... And imagine, you come to Rasulullah and ask this question. Can you imagine somebody coming to a, an imam today and saying, Hey, so uh, I'm thinking about... <laughs> the next janazah would be of the shaykh. Like, you would be dying. <laughs> and then the ayat came, No, you cannot marry those kinds of women in Surah An-Nur. Like, revelation came to teach sahaba and teach the believers, Look, those are not the kinds of people you want to marry. They are their own. You know, don't mix with them. You know, like Ibn, Ab Ibn Ashur says, uh, Rahmahullah, in his tafsir, that ayah is referring to professional prostitutes, that the zani will not marry a zani, is referring to them, because the question was actually raised. I wanted to bring this up to you because for them, you would think that, you know, if, if the Sahabi saw a woman from a mile away, he went the other way and made istighfar the whole night. No, it wasn't like that. They interacted with each other, they talked to each other, they worked with each other, they were in business partnerships. All kinds of interactions happen between men and women, but with principle. It was respectful, it was dignified. And when a companion, when, when somebody likes somebody else, you know what they did? Here's the astaghfirullah part. Here's what they did. Hey, I like you. You want to get married? And she'd say, um, maybe, talk to my dad. She'd say, okay. And then you go to the dad and say, hey, I, I like your daughter. And she's, I mean, I talked to her, she's not entirely opposed to the idea. Is it cool? And he says, let me talk to my daughter. How this happens today in London is you go to a girl, respectfully, hey, we, we worked together for three years. Would you consider marrying me? And she's like, ah. <laughs> and maybe she says, please don't talk to my dad, he'll kill me. Because if you talk to my dad, they'll say, this is why you go to work? This is why we sent you to uni? Like, You, fathers, I have four daughters. I have four daughters. Listen, th those of you that are fathers, that have daughters, you sent your daughters to university. You brought your daughters to this country. You made them live here. You, brought, you took them outside in society. You made that decision. And when somebody like a Muslim likes them, that's a good thing. How are they going to get married sitting at home? Who's going to like them? So when somebody approaches them in a respectful way, you should not say, Oh my God, the day has come, astaghfirullah. You know, ye din bi dekhne the, oh, tawbah, tawbah. You know, what a humiliation. Now we have to go take you back into Bangladesh and hide you in a village somewhere because <laughs> some guy likes you. Astaghfirullah. You know, and there's a, you know, somebody's in rukia on her and calm down. It's okay. You're, somebody likes your daughter, that's a good thing. Now you go and investigate, find out. It's completely fine. The only rishta mentioned in the Quran, the only 
approach mentioned in the Quran is that of Musa alayhi salam in Madian. He was by himself, Musa was by himself. And these girls were by themselves working outside. And he went up to them and helped them out. And the girl said, he's kind of nice. And she, she went back to her dad and said, hire him. Which means, come on dad. You know. And that happened. And the girl said, I like the guy. That's actually what happened in the story of Musa. Musa didn't propose, the girl proposed. And the father can't propose unless he has the approval of his daughter. So it's okay for your girls to say, Dad, there's this guy, this brother, at the Emissariah. <laughs> he does the, he's a Thursday halakha. It's really good, you should come. Your daughter's telling you something. It's okay, go attend the halakha. It's okay, find out. Don't complicate it. There's nothing indignified about that. Don't go date a girl now. And don't take, oh, no man gave a lecture, I'm gonna take you out to dinner. No, no, no. Not that either. But can you have respectful interaction with someone you're interested in for marriage? Absolutely. Absolutely. Nothing wrong with that. Can you take your time to understand each other's likes and dislikes? Yes, it's fine. Respectful courtship is okay. With parental guidance, with the indignified fashion, there's nothing wrong with it. So what happens is we have two extremes. We have people that are more conservative than the Sahaba. And then we have people that are more liberal than liberals. Okay, and the Islam is right in between. It's a natural way. It's a completely natural way. Okay, and so th this is something that I thought it's important to mention for families and for yourself. Talk to your daughters. Ask if they like someone. Don't create a... Between fathers and daughters, there should be open communication. They should not be terrified to tell you that they're interested in somebody. Don't force them to marry someone they don't want to. Don't force your daughters to, and, and tell them, if you don't marry this one, who's going to come and marry you? And you have to, we already said yes to them. Don't humiliate the family and say no now. Those kinds of nikahs are haram. I will say it, they're haram. You cannot emotionally and psychologically force a girl to get married under family pressure. That is batil. And that happened at the time of the Prophet ﷺ. And the Prophet ﷺ considered those nikahs batil. They're, they're invalid nikahs. Until the girl genuinely likes a guy and says, yes, I want to marry him on her own from no pressure from her father, no pressure from her mother, no pressure from anybody else. She likes him. And even if the day of the nikah, she says, Mom, I don't want to do this. The mother doesn't say, too late, girl, too late. We've got the hall, they're all, look, what are people going to do? No, if the girl says, I don't want to do this, then no, stop. Allah gave her that right. You cannot take it away. You're burying them alive. This is the new way of burying women alive, by the way. Back then, they used to take the baby girl and bury her right then. Now we bury them at the day of the nikah. This is what we do. This needs to stop. Let them marry who they want. If they're a dignified Muslim. And because now you're living in a different society, you won't find someone from the same village. It's okay. It's okay. A Bangladeshi can marry a Syrian. It's fine. I yeah, know. It's okay for Syrians too. Yeah. We in Syria. Turkish. Somali. Astaghfirullah Somali. Yes, Somali. It's fine. <laughs> you know? You know, Musa alayhi salam is an Arab. Musa is an Arab. Or, or, or actually not an Arab. He's from Israelite. And he married an Arab. He went and married in Madian, didn't he? So many Arabs have. We only marry Arab. Really? Musa alayhi salam was actually from Israel. What's up with that? You know? It's all good. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.